Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy. Welcome back to more Animal Crossing New Leaf. Last time, we celebrated the holiday that still is Halloween. This time, the witching hour is upon us. And by that I mean it's like after 9 p.m. I was past my bedtime and I was like eight, okay? <laughs> anyway, this time, if you are an Animal Crossing fan in any capacity, you already know what we're gonna be doing from the title of this video, but just in case you are not, I stated back when I started doing these holiday videos that I wanted to visit some notable dream towns. And uh, we probably would have visited more of them had um, I not gotten sick for two months and I had to combine all those videos into one. But um, there is one notable dream town that came up again and again and again and again. It was easily the most, most requested thing for me to do. And you know what? I see no better night than tonight for us to go cover that. So what I need to do is, here at the Dream Suite, I want to lay down on this bed here. And, um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and uh, do this. I She says a little more sleep because I actually made sure and tested it to make sure I had the right dream address right there. So if you're curious about that, yeah, you're in good hands. Let's connect to the internet to see the available dreams. Um, it's good to know that I'm in good hands. I certainly look like enough of a maniac wearing all these patches and then having that mask on with a shower cap, but okay. Now then, why don't you start by telling me what kind of dream you want to have? Uh, I'm going to input a dream address. All right. And um, if you guys want to do exactly what I am doing, there is the dream code for you. Where we are going is the town of Ica, otherwise known as Ica Village. Many people believe this to be the first of its kind. It is a story town, as in it is laid out so that it tells a bit of a story as you walk through it. Really unique idea for what people can create with Animal Crossing, but... I don't want to talk too much about it before we actually get there, so let's lay down on the bed. Now, I'm going to turn down the lights. One sheep. Two sheep. Three. Welcome to the world of dreams. Right now you are having the dream of a sleepy town called Ica. And you want to return to the real world, the world of stress. Please lie down in this bed once more. The real world is stressful and this is meant to not be stressful. I really don't want to know what... <laughs> Never mind. We have a present for us as soon as we get out of bed. I'd like to pick this up. How nice. How about we try opening it? We get a dolly. Okay. Very simple. And if you look down at the map, there's a whole lot of nothing in this area. We got some Jacob's Ladder, some flowers, all these really nice fountains just all laid out for us. I mean, they're all evenly spaced apart and everything. There was a lot of planning that went into this. And in fact, um, this town seems to be still upkept to this day. This tree is bigger than when I saw it, and the houses um, on the map are very different from what I've seen before. Uh, now, we could go over to that villager's house. You can see it belongs to uh, Roscoe, who I believe is a horse, and actually it's Probably him right over there, or is it? Um, no, it is not. This is, in fact, Aika, the girl that lives in this village. This text translates to, this is inside of my dream. So, uh, among all these perfect peaches, all these carnations, how about we try going into the house? Once inside, we have a bit of a scene of a birthday party here. We have the little girl that we just saw up there. It's presumably her birthday. She has two other figures with her. We can't go into this back room, though. But if we try opening this dresser... What is seen cannot be unseen. Um, okay. Oh, uh, with that creepy music, this is interesting. And we have pretend like nothing was seen. Okay. We try turning on the TV. It is just static and nothing else. Can't go back there, so let's try going upstairs. And up here we have what seems to be a bedroom. We got a drawing of that little girl that we saw before. We have two people around here, presumably the people downstairs. We have a drawing of a woman. We have a dog. And we have that very same dolly that we received as a gift when we got here. Same music and everything. A lot of other toys and things like that. But, but you know, just those pictures. Now how about we go back outside and we explore more of the town. Once we're back outside, looking back down at the map, there's only one real way that you can go. This town's very linear in its design, and as you walk through more of it, there are more and more perfect peaches just everywhere. And actually, 
Um, that's something that I want to get into as I go back down here to the plaza because I want to grab a tool from Lloyd. Um, a lot of videos exist on the internet of people doing, like, blind reactions to this place and, you know, like, their impressions of the story and those kinds of things. And I want to tell you straight up, not only is that not really my style, but this is not going to be one of those videos. This is not a blind playthrough of Ica Village or anything like that. I have seen Ica Village many times. It would be impossible for me to be as big of an Animal Crossing fan as I am and not know all about this thing. I've seen videos made of it. I've been here before. I know all about it. So instead, think of this more as a tribute to Ica Village, all the hard work that went into it, and just, you know, pointing out little things about it as well as some of the symbolism at play because there actually is a lot of symbolism. In fact, uh, Perfect Peach is in Japanese and just, I guess, Asian culture as well in general. Generally associated with immortality, longevity, you can kind of see that in Okami with Sakuya. But yes, we head down here and things are looking really different. We have all these sweets just strewn all over the place. We have birthday cake, we have sparkling cider, we have a chocolate coin. We even have a present over here, actually. So how about we try grabbing that? And what exactly is inside? We have a balloon hat, so even more party stuff. And a fortune cookie. Let's see what this fortune cookie has to say. There was a fortune inside, let's see. If you leave my mask out there, something terrible will happen. As you can see, this area resembles the other one, and we have all these uh, fountains, but they're not as equally spaced apart as they were. The ground's all torn up, there's just presumably spoiled food just, like, everywhere. And it just kind of looks like the best In fact, there's even pitfalls here, of course, like... I think I'm not going to fall into one of these things, but when you think you've fallen into your last pitfall, they always find a way to get you, and fang! It seems the animals and even the layout has changed a little bit since I've last been here, so perhaps even if you've seen Ica Village before, you might see new things in this video if you haven't seen it in a while. Retail. Temporarily closed forever. That's in every dream town, but still, it is kind of oddly fitting. And in front of it, we have a striped wetsuit. Um, okay. I'll be happy to take that, I guess. That's interesting. I believe that this is Fang's house. It looks identical. Yes, it is. And as we head further south, we have the town hall. We have that mother right there, or older sister, whoever you want to interpret it as. And in front of her, we have a megaphone. Many see this as her mother calling out for somebody who is missing, possibly Ika herself. We go over here, and we just have a bunch of graves. You can actually dig them up should you have picked up that shovel. And they just have dollies in them, the same dolly that we received before. Next up is the police station. In front of this, you have a toy hammer of sorts. And if you go inside... I just wanted to come here to show that there's nothing but beehives inside. I'm not really sure what this is for or anything like that, but it's definitely unsettling to say the least, and not just because of bees' rolls in Animal Crossing. It's just really random. Either way, we have the second house here, out of the four. So, how about we go inside? Aika is here. Your voice reaches no one. We have all these exit signs as well as all these stools, and it's a bit of a labyrinth. There's these black objects that are blocking your path, and you gotta get on those stools and swivel on them in order to make it through. Through this first room. This was not here the first time that I personally visited Ica Village. We have all these owl clocks looking back and forth between these two statues. This one's very majestic and has angel wings. This one has uh, demon wings on it, like bat wings. And they're just kind of looking back and forth between the two. You have a flower here with some balloons, some items on the floor, and a bunch of pairs of red shoes. To me, this shows indecisiveness between one's light side and dark side. And should we keep going? This sound is so creepy, by the way. This is a sound that I never get used to, just the sound of this room. In fact, I'll be quiet for a moment so you can hear it. In this room, we have that same dolly as before. It's overlooking a shark tank, and there's just all these wheels spinning everywhere. So, I don't know what this room could possibly be. The walls look like it was they were made by a child, you know, like just throwing pastels and paint everywhere. That's what it looks like to me personally, but I don't know what that room could possibly be or what it's trying to say or anything like that. But this last room, this is the hardest one to get to, so let's see what this one has for us. All these dolls are looking away from us. Or are they looking away from us? You swivel the camera around, and you see these two pairs of eyes watching this room with all the dolls facing away. And among them is that same red dolly that we keep seeing. 
And I could traps you in here never to escape! Back to the main part of the house, we run past Ica and head upstairs. We have before us the scene of the creation of sin from the Bible. We have Adam and Eve, the apple and the snake, along with the seemingly perfect world. Down in the basement, we have probably the cheeriest room in this house. We have a feast before us, some happy music, all these dollies are sitting around here, all this tasty food, but... If we approach the red dolly that we've seen before, she has an axe. Should you have picked up the shovel, you'll want to dig in this dig spot right here, because in it, you will find another striped wetsuit. You don't actually need to get this. This was previously the only way that you could find a wetsuit in Ica Village, but it just seems like there's one just laying about. Now. We continue going through it. We can see that things are getting even more torn up. There's some spoiled turnips. There's all these dead bamboo shoots. Uh, we have some clothing here, some pink PJ bottoms, some dead saplings, some garbage thrown all about, some weeds. Uh, who says this Axel's house? Okay. Uh, how about we try going into one of the animals' houses because we haven't done that yet. Should you try going inside, you will find that the animals all have these dollies as well, and their houses look pretty upbeat, except for this one creepy dolly that's just everywhere, and I didn't even know that you could put stuff on top of the kitty radio. That's interesting. So with that, let's keep going through the decay more and more. I'm going to put my shovel away, and let's see who else lives here. Julian. Okay. Pietro? I shared two villagers like a village? What? Well, next up, we have this really run-down shack. We've run into Aika once more. Let's see what she says this time. She says, This scenery was always impure. Let's try going inside of this run-down shack and just seeing what it's like. We have the dolly not hiding the fact that it has an axe anymore, just sitting there waiting for us. In the side room, we have a piano as well as some eggs on the floor. Some people believe this to be symbolism for walking on eggshells or having your parents expect perfection of you, you know, being forced to play the piano despite all the negativity around it. And back into the main room. The sound is being made by a theremin that was placed here. It's a real instrument, but it really does its job well here. And next we have some books, presumably a diary. This is a Lucky Clover, and this is a picture book of sorts with pages torn out and just thrown all over the floor. We also have a music box. It's the same song that we heard at the birthday party at the beginning of the story. And downstairs, we have the same dolly overlooking a carriage. We have a body outline on the bed, and a picture of the mother in what looks to be an adult's room of sorts. Some believe the dolly to represent betrayal because it is holding an axe, and many take that body outline to mean that the mother is dead at this point in the story. If we go back outside... We're going deeper into the decay. We have a lot more animal houses throughout here, but I don't see any need to go into them after we saw Axel's. We have Drago's house. This next house belongs to Truffles, who I believe we saw earlier when talking to Ika. And as we head up through all this trash, all these weeds, another statue, 
And it's definitely a far cry from how perfect the town looked when we first arrived in it. If you recall, the town was nothing like this at the beginning of the story. Ica's house was in the middle of a garden filled with carnations, perfect peaches, and in fact, here is Ica herself. This fun dream is soon ending, she says. This is identical to Ica's house at the beginning of the story, aside from what it's in the middle of. Let's go inside and see what her house is like now. We have the same scene as before. Garbage thrown everywhere, everything torn up, no birthday party going on here. And the clothes in this clothesline, as you might recall, are the same clothes worn by the mother in the picture. Her clothing is just here, hanging on this pole. And now... Even though this place is a wreck, the dresser has been moved aside, allowing us to see just what's back here. We have what looks to be Ika trapped in a prison cell with the dolly holding an axe. Being watched by all these faces. And for the final room, we have just one more place to go, upstairs, to see what's become of Ika's bedroom. We have Ika's mom crossed out, the dog crossed out, Ika herself crossed out, and all the toys are just facing away while the dolly stands beside all these pictures holding an axe. Back outside. We only have one place left to go, and that is the beach. Should we go down here? There's dead bamboo shoots everywhere. And if we go all the way down, let's see if there's just anything we can find. We have on the beach a pair of red shoes. Ika's shoes. In Japanese culture, if one is to commit suicide, they neatly remove their shoes and set them aside before doing so. And as we head up here, we have four-leaf clovers. A really cheery change in tone, wouldn't you say? Well, not exactly. In Japan, the number four, as well as the word for death, have the same pronunciation, despite being written differently. As such, the number four is often associated with death. And if we swim up here, if we grab the wetsuit, and go to the small little secluded area, we can see various offerings left here at a grave. Should we try to dig it all up? We have a creepy skeleton. A time capsule that we cannot read. And that same dolly. There are many different interpretations of the story. It's definitely telling a story as you're going through it, but many people have their own interpretations. One of the most popular is that Ika received a dolly for her birthday. The dolly ended up being evil, but nobody was aware of it. And because Ika was spending time with her friends, family, and dog, it killed all of them so that it could have Ika all to herself. Ika, being lonely, then committed suicide. And Ika was then buried with the dolly, essentially stuck in a prison with the dolly for good. I can see definitely where people are coming from with this interpretation of the story, but my personal take on it is that there's also symbolism of pressure put on by your parents. I think it's possibly that Ika was forced to play the piano when she didn't want to, hence the piano in that really uncomfortable environment, hence all like the drawings on the walls in that other room near the piano and all those other things. And it could be that the dolly, in its own twisted sense, was trying to save her, thinking that her parents were making Ika's life miserable, putting lots of pressure on her. Ika eventually commits suicide over all this pressure. The dolly could get revenge. Uh, hence why all of them are dead, and we see Ika's grave at the end of this. There's many different takes on the story, and I find them all interesting to read through, and I will say that this town has become ingrained in the Animal Crossing culture itself. You cannot be an Animal Crossing fan without having even heard of this. It's just that talked about in the Animal Crossing community, and for good reason. It kind of began a whole trend of just making story towns, and there are other ones. I wish I could explore them all, but... I think this was the one that everyone wanted to see the most, and everybody just talks about the most. And if I had to pick any one town to show, it would be this one due to all the hard work that was put into it. You can only imagine just legitimately creating all these things in gameplay, how much work this had to have taken to craft, and that's just what it is. It was lovingly crafted. Showing what a seemingly perfect family on the surface can actually be under the surface. I think I'm ready to wake up now. Thank <laughs> you. 
Mmm, happy awakenings. Did you sleep well? Um, I don't really feel refreshed, but I kind of want to give that town a positive review, because that actually does impact, you know, like if towns get reviewed for being inappropriate and things like that, so yeah. Ah, uh, thank you for dreaming with us. Feel free to rest whenever you are weary and need rest. Uh, um, okay. Uh, that's definitely not the kind of place I'd want to go to when I'm wor weary, I'll say that much. But yes, we're back in the town of Pallet, and lucky for us, Ica Village was all but a dream. Hope you enjoyed our trip to Ica Village. Like I said, it is a little bit different from other videos. I didn't really want to do, like, a blind reaction because I wasn't going to fake that for you guys. And it is one of my favorite things about the Animal Crossing world, so... Hopefully I was able to show you some cool things about it that you might not have known otherwise. I was able to talk about some of the things that are being shown in, in the village. And, you know, it's just a fun ghost story, really. That's the best way that I can put it. So, we are back at our house. Definitely not as, uh... You know what? Actually, in the spirit of this... I personally think Hypno KK fits this room really well, and yeah, we kind of just came from Micah Village, so I think it is really nice that we pay tribute to it. Anyway, though, we're going to head back into the other room, and some of you might recall that October 31st was the end date that I listed for this Let's Play. Well, I'd like to announce something. I don't want this to be our last gathering in Palettes. We're going to have one more meeting here in Palette. What day, you may ask? Why, November 18th, the one-year anniversary of us moving here. Next time in Animal Crossing New Leaf, we'll be seeing just what's in store. And I can't turn off all these lights. <laughs> See you guys then.